Welcome to EdgeCast, the series where we show you tips, tricks, and best practices when using Solid Edge. Today, we'll be looking at how to use View and Markup to collaborate with Solid Edge users and create detailed feedback or markups in order to suggest design changes. To start with, I'll show you what View and Markup is, what it does, and how to install it. Next, I'll show you the interface and how to examine files that have been sent to you and finally show how to create packaged collaboration files, annotate CAD files, and send your feedback to other users. View and Markup has been around for quite some time. It's collaboration software that's been written specifically to work with Solid Edge. Not everyone involved in the industrial design process will need a full copy of Solid Edge and an associated license, but they may still need to create detailed feedback on other users' work. Viewing Solid Edge files can be done with View and Markup, or with Solid Edge's free viewer. But only view and markup can create collaboration files, which allow you to add feedback in both 2D and 3D. The best thing about this method is that it's possible to send multiple feedback files in one package, whether that be Solid Edge files, images, DXFs, Word document reports, or anything else that contains useful information. Now let's show you how to install view and markup. In ST9 and before, View and Markup was installed at the same time as Solid Edge. However, this is not the case as ST10. These days, it's always installed as a separate application. If you've never used View and Markup before, bear in mind that it doesn't need a license to install or run, meaning that it's simple to set up on as many workstations as you need across your organization. However, if you do run it on a workstation with Solid Edge already installed, you can then open View and Markup either from Design Manager or from Solid Edge, although for the second option you'll need to add it manually to the command ribbon. Here's where you can download View and Markup if you have an active Siemens WebKey account. First, log on to the GTAC homepage, which is linked in the description of this video. Click on Download and Upload Files, then choose the following options. Solid Edge, Full Products, Windows, ST10, and then scroll down to View and Markup, and finally select the download that's in your language. The install is self-contained, and so if you double-click it after downloading, it'll just ask you for normal Windows installation options. Once you start View and Markup and open a Solid Edge file, you'll see a screen similar to this. It looks quite a bit like Solid Edge. We have commands, although not as many, in the top ribbon bar, a sidebar, and a 3D graphics window. We also have a preview navigator window which shows the overall assembly, which can be useful as a reminder of what the overall product is that you're reviewing. Now let's say I'm a design reviewer. I have view and markup already installed, and I'm going to write some feedback for the design engineers. I'm going to right click this grinder assembly and choose open with view and markup and then wait for it to open. And once it's finished processing, here I am in the view and markup environment. I can hold down and drag my middle mouse button to rotate the view about the center of the model and zoom with the scroll wheel. Alternatively, I can zoom with the navigator window in the top left of the screen and use the fit all command from my right click menu. There are also a number of view commands in the command bar that any solid edge users should be familiar with. On the side of the screen below the navigator, you'll see the package tree list, which contains all the file attachments added. More on that in a moment. And finally, below this, you'll find the project workspace. In other words, the assembly pathfinder from Solid Edge. Here you can expand subassemblies and check or uncheck components to show and hide them. You could also show and hide any components you can fence select. If we fence select everything, and right click. And then we can turn the selected items off. You'll also find four tabs at the bottom of the project workspace that can change what commands are visible. Assembly displays the assembly tree. Markup groups show different configurations of user-generated annotations. PMI is only really relevant if the designer has included 3D dimensions or callouts in their part or assembly and paths are used only when motion files are present. The feedback that View and Markup creates is in the form of packaged collaboration files, or PCFs. 
These can only be created or opened by view and markup, and contain read-only CAD data. They can also contain highlights known as markups, any notes and measurements that you believe are useful, and other files that you want to add to support the feedback provided. Notes can be attached to points in 3D space, meaning that the person receiving the feedback won't need to view the model data at a particular angle to understand which feature you're talking about. This means that in complex assemblies, you won't need to take multiple screenshots from different angles to provide useful feedback. If the geometry and notes on their own aren't enough to communicate your meanings, then any file can be attached to a PCF. To add reports, images, videos, or any other files, right-click at the top of the Package Tree list and choose Add. While any file can be added, only users with the appropriate software can open the files attached. In other words, a Word or PowerPoint document can be opened by the end user only if they have other software on their workstation that can open Word or PowerPoint documents. The same goes for all other file types. If you have the right software, right-click and choose Open in Editor. In this example, I need to draw attention to the grinder casing, so I'll attach an image sent from the marketing department. Right-click the package tree list, then Add. Now I'll make sure that file filtering is set to all files, and find my image file. I'll use the same workflow to attach another file, in this case a word report on the ergonomic problems users have been encountering. Finally, I'll send the case part and the draft of the assembly. I might replace this draft in a minute. The one I've currently added isn't very useful. Because PCFs are meant to be independent, there's no link maintained to the original documents. This workstation is set up to open JPEG images with the Windows 10 Photos app. So if I open this image in Editor, that's exactly what will start up. So, if all you want to do is package files into one file that can't be opened by users who don't have view and markup, that's perfectly possible. However, there are also three main data display functions that PCF files can use. Markups, Measurements, or PMI, and Section Views. In the displayed image, you can see examples of each of the three. So how do we add these? Let's start with Markups, which can be added either in 2D or 3D. If you are in the Markups tab and you see it grayed out commands, these are commands that can only be used in either 2D or 3D. For example, here I can't edit my 2D markup preferences, as I'm in a 3D environment. Let's start with the obvious method of feedback, the text box. I can write anything I like here as a note, in any font and any size available to me. However, this note maintains its position on the screen and doesn't attach to any geometry because I didn't have anchor mode active. If I activate anchor mode, I can attach text boxes and images to a single point in 3D space. So let's go ahead and do that with a clearer note. Calibri is usually pretty clear. I'll also choose some advanced text callouts. Let's say I don't know whose work this was originally, or what this part is called. We'll ignore the fact that I added this exact file as part of the PCF, but I can add a note that calls out that information from the geometry. So, we need part name, and under metadata attributes, author, plus a text request for that person to make some changes to this part. And here we go, a smart note that asks Mr. Robinson to round the edges on case1.par. If I rotate the view, the note stays attached to the point I chose, making it much easier to see what I'm writing about. My other note isn't particularly useful now, so I think I'll just delete it. Next I'll show some 2D markups. If we switch over to the draft, you'll notice that there's no anchor mode here, as it doesn't really make any difference. We can add some 2D geometry here to highlight bits of the draft file, such as a coloured rectangle to highlight an area. Now my 2D preferences are set up to make it a filled rectangle, but I'll right-click it, making sure I have my Select Tool active first, and then go to Properties, and change the Fill options over to No Fill. I can also resize and move any markup shapes around by selecting them, and dragging either their edit handles or lines. 
Text boxes are still available, but without the advanced callout options. The draft file is just a 2D image at this stage, and any information not already added by the drafting engineer needs to be added manually. We could just also add a freehand line to highlight the round that needs editing. Second on our list of features that can be added, measurements are the next stage of marking up a PCF file, and just like markups, there are certain measurements that are only possible in 2D or 3D. Let's start with 2D. I've skipped the re-adding of a draft file with orthographic views. Unfortunately, the draft only has one dimension in it, and this is a read-only image. Ideally, all dimensions would be present, but we can at least get a rough idea of scale with measurement tools. I'm going to need to get some dimensions manually, and for that, I need an accurate scale. If I choose Calibrate Raster, this allows me to choose two points between which I know the exact distance. In this case, it's going to have to be the 60mm dimension between bolt centers. Once they're selected, I can start adding dimensions. Now, because my 2D preferences are set up to allow persistent measurements, I can add more than one at a time. Let's choose one point, then the other. Bear in mind this is not meant to be a replacement for proper dimensioning in Solid Edge, just a way to gather estimates. This is reflected through the approximate symbol, which you'll see at the start of each measurement value placed using this method. Another measurement would be useful. Mm, maybe a radial dimension. Ah, that's interrupted my dimension command, so let's clear that. Now, back to the radial measurement. Because view and markup doesn't recognize draft lines or curves, the radial measurement is always calculated with three points along a curve of constant radius. So we need to choose one, two, three points, then click to place the measurement. Maybe we'll move it out a ways away from the model. So those are 2D measurements. Not the most accurate, but a very useful backup for when there aren't enough draft dimensions already present. 3D measurements are often more accurate, particularly if taken between planes, as they obtain their values directly from the assembly, which is defined with boundary representation modeling. If you're familiar with the inspect commands in Solid Edge, these should be easy to place. But if not, here are some basics. 3D measure contains commands that allow you to define how many elements you want to measure between, and selection filtering allows you to define what those elements are. For example, I want to use a single element to return a value. Let's show the radius of the face of the case, which is a single measurement, but taken from a surface instead of an edge. Now we can see this face has a 30mm radius, and the length of it is 185mm. Now let's take a double measurement, but instead between two points. In this case, we can tell the x, y, and z minimum distance between this point on the edge here, and another one. If you're unsure which dimension is x, y, or z, look at the bottom left-hand corner in order to gain your bearings. If you need a large number of markups to be applied to a model, it might be useful to split them into groups so that your model isn't covered with notes and pictures. Let's say I need a way to turn off all markups present here, but keep the dimensions available. To do so, I need to create another markup group with the new group command, a list of which can be found on the bottom part of the sidebar. Let's go ahead and give this group a logical name. It also appears to remove all the markups, but they're still available. They're just in the old markup group, which I can click on to make it the active markup group. Finally, you can create section views of your 3D geometry. In this case, I want to section my way through case1.par, so I'll use this tab here, Section. Under this tab, I'll choose the Create Section command. Then, with this simple options bar, I'll choose an axis to section along. For example, a Z section will create a section plane in XY, and so on. I'm going to use a section along the X axis, I'm happy with the fact that it's placed halfway through the model, so I'll click Apply and close the section options. Now to choose a side to clip material from. The near side should work just fine. 
I also want to add a grid and clip the bottom half of the model. Here's my grid, oriented along the z-axis. And adding these sections also creates a new tab at the very bottom of the sidebar. Let's show you what's available. The section views being edited show with a green tick box. And if I were to untick this box, it would hide the section view. As the Z section view is active, I'm going to go ahead and clip the material again. Maybe not near this time, but far. Of course, the material removed depends on wherever you are in terms of view orientation. Now I'm finished adding markups, measurements, and sections, and it's time to save my feedback to a finished PCF file. View and Markup is only capable of saving files in PCF format, and it's the only application that can open PCF files as well, so make sure the receiving user has View and Markup before sending their files. When saving, it's also possible to set security options on the file to make sure certain actions are not possible, such as opening it without a password, saving it again, or adding more markups. I'll say this grinder has enough markups, so it's time to save. And before saving, I'll choose Security Password Options, because I don't want just anyone to be able to access it. Here are the options I can restrict, should I choose to. I'm going to disable Print and Save commands for users who open this file, and add a password, and confirm it. I'm sure this is a perfectly valid password. In all seriousness, I'd advise creating a strong password if your PCF contains proprietary information. Let's go ahead and save this. The screen will cycle through each of the individual files as it processes them, and finish. When this file is opened again, the first thing you're going to see is this password entry field. Let's enter our extremely secure password and hit OK. Now we're back in our packaged collaboration file, with all the required files loaded in memory. As you can see, the save and print commands are suppressed by the security options I set earlier. So, in conclusion, we've covered how to install View and Markup via GTAC, and what its purpose is in the context of an industrial design environment. We've also shown the three different types of markup available to you, and how to add more files in a packaged collaboration file tree. Finally, I showed the security options available to you when saving out PCF files for viewing by other users. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, areas of Solid Edge you'd like us to cover in future videos, or other feedback, please either leave a comment below or send them to us by email at support at cuttingedge.co.uk. And be sure to tune in to watch the next episode of Edgecast when we'll be explaining how to use Design Manager effectively.